Well, good morning. Morning. Good to see everybody today. I uh, I feel like I'm some sort of prop comedian today. I brought a whole box of things up here to help me with announcements. Um, I'm going to drop them. So we'll just do these one at a time. Uh, just a reminder that uh, Alabaster, if you have not had the opportunity to turn an Alabaster box, um, it's still up the front. Uh, again, those those monies go to support uh, churches. Uh, schools, hospitals around the world, or their building, like the physical building and construction and maintenance and all that stuff. But don't forget to Alabaster. Drop that down there. Um, the next thing on my list, I'm going to try and move quickly because I have a lot of announcements for some reason. I'm going to do the, the big box first. That seems to be this awesome anymore. Should have thought through this a little bit. All right, so this big box. Does everybody know what this big box is? I mean, I don't know what it looks kind of empty. Do you know why it looks kind of empty? We hit our goal. We hit our goal. Those who aren't familiar, uh, family fair receipts that come into this box that sits out in the foyer gets collected for a long, you were saying four or five years it took us three years? Four years. We collected receipts for four years. We hit a certain dollar amount, and Peggy gets to turn that in, and the food pantry gets a thousand dollars for just turning receipts. So, if you're a family fair shopper, or if you're looking for a place to shop, think about time for bringing your receipts, and we got to start over, right? So, uh, but we wanted to celebrate that this morning. I know that's been something that's been going on for four years. That's no small uh, uh, milestone. Uh, the next thing is. If you feel like God is putting it on your heart uh, to work with kids during the Sunday school hour, we are looking for um, a or many Sunday school teachers, uh, a few, that would want to work with the kids during the Sunday school hour. Uh, right now, we have more of a child care model going on, which is, which is great. We love the fact that there's volunteers that are caring for our kids, but we'd like to kind of bring in some teaching uh, components to it more. And so if that's something that you think God might be putting on your heart, um, there's one of these little cards on the surfboard out there with some details about it, or see me, or um, talk to David uh, Dake about it as well. Um, but just be praying about that, even if it's not you. I know um, you may not be feeling called to uh, teach Sunday school class with little kids. I know that's not necessarily like, what I feel called to do. Um, but I'm gonna pray for others. Whoever it may be that the right person would step into that role. Um, so that's there. Just moving right along. Um, next on my list, October 30th, we are hosting our uh, trunk or treat. Last year we had a drive to trunk or treat um, due to COVID type uh, regulations and stuff. This year we're going to do maybe a little bit more traditional trunk or treat. But October 30th, from 4 to 7 p.m., um, it's a combined effort. First Church may be taking the lead a little bit, but we're partnering with Hope Church and First Kids Learning Center to uh, organize and get candy to people in the community. And so we're looking for candy donations, number one, first and foremost. If you want to help get candy out, it be looking. There's some great deals. Everybody's selling candy at the moment. And it took a lot of candy last year, a lot. Um, so if you're thinking about that, how you can do that. But also, you might see in the foyer there's a trunk theme board. If you're somebody that wants to have a trunk, set up your trunk, and if you don't want to talk about it, you just bring your car and you decorate it somehow to make it fun for kids uh, and adults alike, I guess, to, to trick or treat through the, the trunks. There's a theme board out there with some suggested themes, but there's also some create your own. If that's something you want to do, take the little post-it note off. Write your name there so we know that you took that and who it is. And then we have kind of a, a, a map list of, um, we won't go see it there, but a, a clipboard that has kind of the layout that Brenda put together for us on, on where all the, the cars will be. And we'll get you on that list and get you in a signed spot. And that will be, Trump Retreat's going to be awesome. Also, if you're looking for something to, to do but it's, you don't want to decorate a trunk, we're going to have like a uh, info greeting area. So. People that just welcome the, the guests, but also give out information about First Church, Hope Church, and First Kids. If you want to volunteer to work at that table, that booth area, and greet our guests, um, that might be a good alternative if you don't want to decorate the trunk. Um, but uh, keep your eyes and ears open for more on um, retreat. And then, um, oh, we have a, a, a card uh, from Ruth that I just wanted to take a moment to 
share. Um, it says, what, is, what does thank you really mean? Thank you is one of those wonderful phrases people use to express a special gratitude. But there's often a lot more to it than those two words say. Now, when it comes from the heart, from deep inside the nicest feelings and the most special thoughts, thank you means so much. It means thank you for taking the time to show that you care. It means you really made my day. Sometimes it means that you really make all the days so much better. Thank you means you didn't have to. I'm so grateful you did. And then a note specifically from Ruth says, thank you seems so simple and not enough. Your prayers, thoughts, concerns, and donations are greatly appreciated and will always hold a special place in our heart. Special thanks to the ladies for such a delicious meal. God bless each and every one. Thank you so very much. We have their services for Harry and Monday and so one more time together to celebrate his life. So thank you for the card. And then um, just a, a reminder as I get all my props together, get off of the platform. Uh, the offering box is in the back if you want to drop that off, but also we're just kind of reminding folks we do have an online option if you go to the, the website, valleycreeknazarene.org. Um, you can make your offering ties on there. Um, and just because this week was crazy and I didn't schedule anybody else, I'm going to read our scripture for this morning. It comes from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 through 12, and this is the NIV. It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking, but there is a place where someone has testified. What is mankind that you are mindful of, the son of man that you care for him? You made them a little lower than angels. You crowned them with glory and honor. And put everything under their feet. And putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. And the assembly Actually, 
happens um, in the book of Mark. Okay. In this story, Jesus is um, he's telling people about Jesus. He's wandering around and um, he's he's wanting people to know about how much God just absolutely loves them, right? And so then all of these parents, did your parents bring you to church today? Yeah. Well, all of these parents, they were bringing their kids to Jesus because they wanted their kids to see Jesus. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. I think that's really cool that, that they brought their kids to Jesus. And uh, the disciples, though, the disciples had it in their head that children were just kids and that they just didn't need to be with their parents. They're not with their parents. They just didn't need to be with Jesus. And so they said to the parents and to the kids, no, don't bother Jesus. Leave him alone. Go back home. He doesn't want to see you today. How do you think this made Jesus feel? Ooh, right? That's how Jesus felt. I like that. Right? And he said, no. What are you guys doing? I'm like, what the kids come to me? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is for children and for those who think like children. Let nothing stop children from coming, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Don't stop them. And then after that, Jesus opened his arms. And what do you think the kids did? They ran to him. And Jesus told them how much he loved them. Jesus told them how much of a friend he wanted to be. And then Jesus blessed them. Do you know what a blessing is? Like what? Like bowing? Kind of. A blessing is when somebody says something special to you. Or, or gives you something that you don't really need, but they give it to you anyway. Have you ever had somebody tell you something so special that made you happy? Yeah? That's a blessing. They gave you a blessing. Okay? And that's what Jesus wanted people to understand. Now, I want you guys to think for a second. How did it make you feel when Miss Brenda said you guys were welcome to come up on stage? Boo-hoo! Thumbs down, right? Now, do you guys really believe that Miss Brenda didn't want you up here? No, we know Miss Brenda wanted you up here, right? But it still didn't make us feel very good. So how do you think the kids and all the moms and dads felt when the disciples wouldn't let their kids go up to see Jesus? Boo, right? We don't like that. Because, well, do you guys want to see Jesus? Yeah, so you don't want to be stopped from seeing Jesus. Okay, I want you to speak for if you could learn any lesson from this, any lesson from the story at all, what, what would you learn? What did Jesus teach you with this lesson? That Jesus always, I'm going to say Jesus always wants to be with us, right? Jesus chooses to want to be with us all the time. What else do you learn? That was a really good answer, Maggie, and, you know, everybody else might have their own answer in their head and not question it, and that's okay, too. Okay? I want to tell you guys something very special, though. Jesus loves you, okay? And sometimes you might feel like just because you're a kid, you can't do anything. Have you ever felt that way? Jesus doesn't feel that way about you. Jesus says that you are important, that he wants to be your friend, that he wants to spend all the time with you that he can. And do you think anybody wants to stop Jesus from that? No. Jesus, what do you think Jesus would tell them if somebody said, you can't go see him? To go away. What did they tell us, Brenda? And Jesus would say, shame on you. Let the kids come to me. Right? Because Jesus wants you. He wants to be your friend. Okay? Now, before you go sit back down in your seats, we are actually going to pray for you guys. So, if you are a parent or a guardian of young children, whether it's nursery, preschool, 
for um, like elementary school. If you are a parent, I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and come forward. I'm going to ask you guys to go to the altars, okay? And I want you guys to go stand with your parents at the altars, okay? Go ahead. Parents, I have, a, I have something to say to you. Thank you. Thank you for making your children come into Jesus a priority in their lives. Because without you bringing them to Jesus, somebody else might not be. And you have the privilege, you have the honor of raising these kids. And, and we have the privilege and the honor as a church to help you. But we couldn't do it without you bringing them here. Church, I'm going to ask you guys to just extend your arms towards the families as I pray a blessing over them. And then from there, they'll go sit down and I will finish. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have brought us here today. We are grateful that you have brought these parents here today who see how good and merciful you are and how important it is that your children are raised knowing you and seeking after you. We thank you that they brought their children here today to learn about you. And we pray for these children. We pray that as they grow, that they will grow with you inside of them. That they will grow to be young men and young women who seek after you and desire you. That they will know that they are loved beyond belief and that you value them just as much as you value anybody else, God. That they are seen, that they are heard, that they are loved. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys may go sit down. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> Surprise! All right. Now, I could end the sermon there. But that was for them. That's the message that children need to hear. We have a little bit of a different message. And yes, we need to hear that we are valued. Yes, we need to hear that we are loved. But that's not the point of this message. That's not what Jesus was trying to teach his disciples. See, in Bible times, and even, I would say, even after the Bible was ran, the children really weren't valued much. You heard me ask the children if they feel like being a child hinders them. I didn't say exactly like that. And their answers were... Yes, that sometimes as kids, they feel like they can't do things, right? And, and some of that is because, yes, they're young, and yes, they need to learn, but some of that is society says that kids should be seen and not heard. Or, better yet, kids should just go away and let the adults be adults. Um, and, and that's what's happening here, is that the disciples and, and the society around them said that children should just leave the adults alone to be about their business and that they just need to go and to learn and to grow. And it's important for them to learn and to grow, but it's not important for them to not be involved. Um, this is why the disciples said to them, no, like, just go away, just leave Jesus alone. Because they, they were inconveniencing Jesus. Do you think Jesus felt this way? That's a boo moment, right? right? Boo. Right? Because Jesus didn't feel this way at all. In fact, Jesus said, no, let the children come to me. Let the, Jesus, or let the children be a part of my story. And this turns the kingdom upside down because it's now saying that kids are just as important as adults. And that's confusing. That's different. That's not what society says. So why would Jesus say that? Why would Jesus value the children when everybody else said no? Let's stop and think for a minute. How often do we say, I wish life was as easy as it was when I was a kid? Right? Or there's the, the innocence and the purity. Like Many parents scream with their children watching TV because they don't want them tainted by the world. Um, there's a sense of righteousness in the children, or in children. A sense of, that's not okay. I, they shouldn't be treating each other that way. I'm going to go 
make that right. They, they, they hate that. There's no prejudices. They, they see everybody as their equal. Everybody is welcome. Everybody is their friend. And the most beautiful part of that is that they also see that I don't need anything from them. I just want to be your friend. And, and, and there's just this purity about it where sin in the world hasn't quite tainted them. And it's not different today. Um, several of you work with children, or, or at least you, I know several of you work in the daycare. And we see this played out from babies all the way through even my middle schoolers. Um, we see if a kid is sitting out by themselves, a friend comes along. It may not be a friend they play with often, but a friend comes along and says, hey, you want to come play with me? And off they adventure. They, they don't care who's watching. They don't care how they're going to be talked to or how they're going to be treated because they're innocent. They're pure. They have this deep, rich love in their heart for good. And I think that that's beautiful. But something changes. Or rather, someone's change from the time that they're children to the time that they reach adulthood, and even sometimes, unfortunately, before they reach adulthood. We grow up. The world paints us a different picture. We start to experience heartache. We start to experience pain. We start to experience prejudices, people treating us because, differently because of how we look, because of how we talk, because of um, how we think. And that then takes the way that we turn around and we treat other. It breaks the relationship. That's sin. It's, sin is what we do to break relationships. And so with that, then comes this camaraderie of, okay, I'll be your friend, but here's what I expect in return. And maybe you don't lay out the expectations for return, but I'll scratch your back, you scratch my back. It's a reciprocal. And, and gone are the days where I just want to be your friend, be your friend. I just want to know you to know you. And that's what sin does. It slowly builds the walls back up and strips us from our innocence of children. These walls stop us from seeing the world through children's eyes. This sin stops us from loving one another with the purity and, and the unconditional love that children have to offer. We see behaviors of people and say, well, they must want something out of it because why, why else would they be talking to me? When in reality, maybe they just need a friend. And these, these walls hinder us, not just from bringing, allowing children to come to Jesus, because we say, well, they're just not ready. They're just not mature enough. They, they just can't handle all of the stresses of this world. So we're going to just push them. But it also stops us from seeing the world. And, and it hinders the least of these. Not just the least of these in being children, but the least of these in being anybody who is different than we are. Anybody whose society says... They're not worth my time. Our walls, our prejudices as adults put up these hindrances that stop us from bringing people to Jesus. And this is the problem that the disciples had with the children coming to Jesus, is they were the least of these. They should be seen and not heard. They should have bothered Jesus. That was a problem. Because they were hindering the least of these, from getting to where they needed to go. Another problem, I'm not going to go into this too much because Pastor Tanner did really good with it last week, was that children were part of the inner circle. They were part of the ones that had the privilege of sitting with Jesus every single day and learning with Jesus every single day. And so if the children go to Jesus, then it means that I can't go to Jesus. But you know that's not true. That's right. You see, the disciples were yet again stopping an outcasted group of people from getting to be with Jesus. 
And Jesus chastised him for this. It wasn't just like, hey, no, shame on you, or don't do that, don't do that. It was shame on you. It was indignation. It was a righteous indignation because Jesus sees the value of children, and he was upset that anybody would think that somebody doesn't deserve him. You see, the kingdom of heaven is for everybody. And how dare the disciples get in the way of anybody that wants to come to Jesus? Jesus wanted the disciples to learn. Did I miss this slide? I think I'm behind. We should be on slide seven, if that helps. That is an all right. <laughs> Sorry. Jesus wanted the disciples to learn that not only were children valued, but also that for one to truly enter the kingdom of heaven, they must have the mindset of a child. So what does it mean? What does the mindset of a child mean? Well, it means innocence and purity. Cutting out the things of this world that cause us to think unclean thoughts, unholy thoughts, ungodlike thoughts. It means no prejudice. It means to stop thinking about how they're different than I am and stop letting that stop the relationship from building. It's seeking righteousness when somebody is hurt, when somebody is broken, when there's a relationship that needs restored. Righteousness is doing what we can to make things right. It's creative thinking. This one sounds a little bit weird, but... We, children have a beautiful way of thinking about the world, what's wrong with the world, and how to fix it. To think like a child is to see the world from their eyes. To see the sin in the world, to see the pain in the world, the brokenness in the world, and what humanity has done to it, and think, this is not right, and I need to do something about it. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. That is what creative thinking is. is using the power of our brain that God has given us to change the world for good, to better the world. And finally, unconditional love. Not, I love you if. Not, I love you because X, Y, and Z. I love you. All of you. Your brokenness. Your messiness, your joys, your sorrows, all of it, I love you. We achieve this by valuing children as a part of the kingdom of God, first and foremost. So bringing the children into the worship service has just one form of it. Right? It's only one part of it. It is essential for them. Because Jesus loves them just as much as Jesus loves you and me. The second part of this is becoming like a child. Now, I'm not saying run around like a banshee screaming your head off. But I am saying adopt those principles, adopt those mindsets that I had previously just talked about. Innocence, purity, no prejudices. Right? Adopting those things into your lifestyle. Because when we accept children and when we become like children, then we do receive the kingdom of God. Okay. So now what do we do? How do we bring about this upside down kingdom of God? First, I already said it. I'm going to actually have them leave this slide up. First, we value children. Second, we become like children. You can go ahead and just skip this slide. We, further, we must become involved in the lives of children. First and foremost, we must become involved in the lives of children at every possible opportunity. Um, as a whole, I would say that this church does a decent job. Um, I think about every Sunday morning. What do we do with the kids every single Sunday morning? We pray over them. 
We bring them forward before they go to junior church and we pray over them. And it's not just praying like, a, dear Jesus, be with them. No, we're praying that Jesus enters them. And that they, Jesus, they, they learn from Jesus. Right? We provide learning opportunities to them for, through junior church, through hopefully through Sunday school soon. We, um, sorry. Um, we have other ways that we do want to encourage them. We, Wednesday nights, um, we, that's another plug for you, is that we need somebody Wednesday nights because the kids that you saw up here, they sometimes come on Wednesday nights and they're sitting with their parents or, or well, yeah, they're sitting with their parents and they're not quite learning about Jesus in the way that we would like them to. Um, that's another way to do it. We pray for them when they're at home. We provide nursery services for them across the way every Sunday morning. Um, we do fun functions like the Trump retreat. But we can do more. We must do more. Because if we are not more diligent about bringing children to Jesus, we are not any better than the disciples. I know that kind of stings. But if we are not standing up for children, then we are not any better than when the disciple says, sorry, you can't go see Jesus. You see, we can do more by investing in the children that are here in front of us. And there's a lot more children in front of us than what you think. Um, there are uh, four other ministry opportunities involving children I want to talk to you guys about today. Uh, the first one is literally right across the drive from us. First Kids Learning Center, right? This is a place where the motto is literally providing growth and learning through the love of Jesus. Oh, that was a test, right? Through the love of Jesus, everything we've got to do is through the love of Jesus, and we teach 144 kids that on a weekly basis, daily basis. Monday, Monday through Friday, Sunday's giving me her foot, right? Think about that. You have the opportunity to impact 144 lives that walk through our doors regularly. And that's just their children, just the children. That's not including the countless adults that walk through the doors to drop them off. Um, you have that opportunity. The daycare needs you. First Kids Learning Center needs you to help bring children to Jesus. Through prayer, um, after service, I have some prayer cards that the, the kids are going to hand out to you guys of ways that you can pray for and pray over the daycare. You can do it by volunteering. Believe we, me, we need more people. We need more Jesus lovers coming into that daycare daily showering these kids with the love of Jesus. And who knows, he may land a job, right, Mr. Jones, wherever he's at, or not at right now? Probably, he's with the kids. He's with the kids. <laughs> um, right? Or, or Miss Abby, who's also with the kids. Um, those are just two of our church members that ended up volunteering and then becoming employees of the daycare. Um, if you are interested in volunteering, that woman right there, stand up and wait. That's not a stand. I already told her she rolled her eyes at me earlier this week when I told her she was standing up. Right? Talk to Cindy. Get plugged in with this daycare, whether it's through prayer or whether it's through volunteering. Uh, the next one is Kids Hope USA. Um, this one had a little bit of hiccups due to COVID and the in and out of school and whatnot. But we are part of this Kids Hope USA mentoring program where we as the church have the opportunity to go into the schools and to one-on-one -on -one mentor children. And, and these children are, they've got some rough lives. They need somebody, they need a positive, Jesus-loving influence in their life to help them with their struggles. Um, so you have the opportunity to be a mentor. Well, if you don't think you can be a mentor and got a job or you've got health issues, things like that, that hinder you from being a mentor, become a prayer partner. It's loving on children is hard work to do. 
But being, being a prayer partner, coming alongside in the car and praying with them for their struggles with, with whatever's going on in the kids' lives, because they, they can't talk about it. Um, my husband was a mentor. He did not have in this. And I could see the, the struggle he was going through, and he couldn't talk to me about it. But that prayer partner can be that person. And they can pray for each other, and they can lift each other up in prayer. So you can be a prayer partner. And then the last one is that there's a small expense to Hope USA. I am so talking about it. There's a small expense to Kids Hope USA. It's really small. If you feel like God is leading you to help cover the, the cost, then um, use your tie envelopes and to put your money in it and write on there, Kids Hope USA, slip it in the offering box, and we will know to put that towards being able to pay for this mentorship program. The next one, this one's short, much shorter. Go ahead, sir. Or whoever's doing it. This one's much shorter. Get involved. Get involved in your local schools, whether it's through the PTA, whether it's um, connecting with teachers one-on-one, -on -one, buying school supplies, call the, or call the secretaries at the school. Um, teachers need your help, because they're in this time frame where things are hard for them too. They're always planning for the unknown, and they could use you, they could use your prayer. And you are still investing in the lives of children, investing in making their lives a little bit less stressful. And the last one is becoming a child sponsor. Uh, the Church of the Nazarene has what we have, or is called MCM, child sponsorship. It's really hard to remember, right? Um, $30 a month. The daycare actually has a child that we sponsor. And for $30 a month, um, we, we make sure that this kid is getting food, their bills are paid, he's invested in his schooling, um, Christmas presents are bought with this money, right? There's a lot that goes into loving this child, and then we get pen pal correspondence, we get to write letters back and forth. Um, for more information on that, you can either visit etsyam.org slash sponsorship, or talk to Cassie. Um, I'm going to go back to Kids Hope really quick. Those of you that don't know who to talk to about Kids Hope, that's Tanya. Right there. I'm going to talk to Tanya for more information about Kids Hope. Be involved. Right? This gives you, like, I, I gave you three concrete examples, and you were been given more examples throughout the sermon today. Be involved in the life of your children. Be involved in these lives. Because, again, if you look at your screen, if we fail to bring children to Jesus, then we become like the disciples, hindering the least of these as they pursue a relationship with Jesus. Don't be like the disciples in that manner. In a lot of ways, we want to be like the disciples. Don't be like the disciples saying, no, you can't go see Jesus. When we creatively engage in bringing children to Jesus, though, we are offering the children the kingdom of God. We are offering a outcasted group the opportunity to be equals with us in receiving the kingdom of heaven. That's what the upside down kingdom looks like. When we invite children into the ah, there we go. When we invite children into the kingdom of God, we have the opportunity to learn from them and to become like them. This is how we ourselves enter the kingdom of God. Church, bring the children to Jesus' feet. Let them be loved by him. Let them be blessed by him. We are called to bring them to him, to become like him. And then we all together get to enter into this upside down kingdom called the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God belongs to children, and it belongs to those that think like children. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to think like you, or to think like your children, to become like your children. And I pray that we as a church will be diligent about bringing children to you, about being your love and your example to, to the children around us. Let us learn how to be your children through them. 
Let us learn what it means to bring the kingdom of God to earth through bringing children into your kingdom. We pray this in your name. Amen.
in just a, a moment, I'm going to ask whatever kids would want to come down and help us serve communion. To come down uh, with, with Tabitha and myself. We're going to form a couple lines. Uh, adults, uh, obviously the last couple times we've tried this, I have done a terrible job of explaining. Uh, as you come forward, it's not it's not uh, drive through where you come and pick up your stuff and go home and eat it. <laughs> come receive the elements uh, from the tray. Um, the kiddos and Tabs and I will will share that with you. Partake of that right right there. Eat and drink and receive that as it's presented to you. Um, because there will not be a time later in the service where I say, you know, everybody eat the bread together. We don't say anything. There's been a lot of confusion. I think it's mostly my fault. Uh, but does that make sense? All right, I'm going to get Jessica the microphone and we're going to get this communion rolling.
Son's holy name we pray these things. Amen.